Welcome, 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 everyone. We are so glad to have you with us today, uh, this evening. You are attending our library's Black History Month 2022 second online event. This is a chef demonstration called Stones, Bones, and Black Eyed Peas. Uh, your facilitators today are Chefs Michelle Guillen and Chef Sable Askew. Um, thank you for being here tonight. We're excited. This is going to be wonderful. I would love it if you would introduce yourselves in the chat, type in your name, type in the library location that you go to normally, your pronouns that you prefer, and let us know where you heard about this program, if you would. Um, just know that everyone's muted now, but you'll be able to unmute at the end of the demonstration to ask questions. All right. Are you ready to get started? Ready to get started. <laughs> As she said, I'm Michelle Gwen. Uh, I'm sorry, were you ready? Oh, almost. I, I was going to do a little more introduction real quick. I'm sorry. Absolutely. That's my fault. Right I ready to get cooking. This is all good. We're all feeding up, so we I need know, to get ready. <laughs> it's all good. Um, my name is Brittany Wade, and I'm a, what's called a Black cultural advocate, library um, advocate and I'm a library assistant at the North Portland Public Library Branch. Um, the BCLA team, Black Cultural Library Advocates, um, we're located at 14 branches across our library system. We work with our community, our Black community, to bring services and programs specifically related to us, by us, and for us. So we do story times, we help you find books and other media, and we create programs like this one. Um, I would like to start by offering this land acknowledgement. Uh, Multnomah County is sited upon the ancestral homelands of the Multnomah, Malala, Clathmet, Chinook, Clackamas, Gualatin, Kalapuya, and many other indigenous nations. These nations have become the confederated tribes of Grand Ronde and the confederate tribes of the Silets Indians, as well as the Chinook nation and the Cowlitz Nation in Washington state. Now land acknowledgements, we do them to recognize and respect the enduring relationships that indigenous people have with their traditional homelands. The effects of colonization can still be felt today and land acknowledgements are a small part of the step down the path to repair, reconciliation and cultural revitalization. Um, and that acknowledgement is courtesy of someone named Melanie Fai. This program that we're all participating in today is made possible by the National Endowment for the Humanities Fund of the Library Association. Now, your chefs, Chef Michelle and Chef Sable, um, we're excited for you to join them. They are the owners of Finer Things and Events Catering. Michelle Guillen, along with her daughter, Sable Askew, um, and we're excited for you to take a trip back into history with us together today. You're gonna to enjoy a cooking demonstration using traditional foods and recipes cooked by African-Americans from the time of slavery and explore many modern interpretations. Chefs, I will let you take it. Thank you. Right, thank you so much. As she said, I'm Michelle Gwynn um, with Finer Things, Events and Catering. And this is my daughter, Sable, ask you. Yeah. And today we're going to prepare for you some traditional um, African-American dishes um, with the interpretation that we like, a little spin we like to put on them. Um, some of them are very classic. Others are a little bit different. Like yeah. the dish Sable's about to do right now, we're going, she's going to do some mm -hmm. hush puppies. Yes, kind of a spicy rendition. I feel like hush puppies has like a pretty, nice base that you can do whatever you want to it and i've kind of done that here let me get started you want to show it up go ahead and get okay. started they're <laughs> spicy and they have gouda in them smoked gouda so let's yeah. so i think that this recipe is in the recipe cards that have been provided to you guys digitally i'm not sure but i think so um so i'm just gonna throw these ingredients in here so I have two bowls one for dry ingredients and the other is for wet ingredients so i'm gonna start with the dry mix I have one cup of gluten-free flour and one cup of um, cornmeal. And I'm going to add some other, other dry ingredients. So I have some 
I think a half teaspoon of baking powder, a half teaspoon of baking soda and some salt here. And then I also have some sugar. I think we have about two tablespoons of coconut sugar here. Why do you use coconut sugar? I use coconut sugar because it has a lower glycemic index. And mm -hmm. I notice that when I eat it, I don't get as sleepy. It doesn't right. drop my blood sugar super quickly. And it has like a nice mapley molassesy flavor. It's, it's a little sugar. healthier, but it's still tasty. It's still tasty. It's still sugar, but it's mm -hmm. a little better sugar. Um, and then also I'm adding here a little bit of Cajun seasoning. So what's in here is my own blend. It's um, onion powder garlic powder, some oregano, cayenne, pepper, probably some other things. It's also in the recipe. Um, and you can just add whatever you want. So I'm gonna add that together. I'm gonna get a spoon here and mix these dry ingredients pretty thoroughly. Okay. All right. And then the next thing that I have um, is some buttermilk. And this is at room temperature. This is full fat cow's milk. Um, buttermilk. You can do plant-based milk or regular milk if you'd like. If you want to make it like buttermilk, just add a little bit of vinegar to it and let it sit for five minutes, mm -hmm. and that will give it the buttermilk flavor and texture. Um, next thing I have here are two eggs at room temperature. Um, I have tried using um, egg replacer, and it works just as well. Um, my son can't eat eggs, so I was like, I'll make you one with, with egg replacer, and he he really liked it. His Mimi can't eat <laughs> eggs either, so. Yeah, so we're, we're just being accommodating to the family. Um, and the next, I'm going to add some smoked Gouda. This is like, I think this is goat smoked Gouda that I have here. Um, and I love it. It just has such a nice, nice, uh, unctuous flavor. I love this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm also adding a little bit of onion. Some onion. I got white onion and red onion here. So you can get a spoon to make this a little easier on myself. <laughs> right here. And then I'm going to add some bell pepper. I love bell pepper. It has a, such an aromatic flavor. And we were talking the other day, we're like, it's in a lot of soul food dishes. It is. Um, there's a lot of bell pepper. And this, the three colors, they, they, to me, they taste the same, except for the red and the orange are a little sweeter. Yeah. Um, and that's what you're using. That's now, what I'm using the here. Orange. I love the orange. It's, mm -hmm. it's so sweet, so yeah. pretty. And then I have some um, adobo. Um, that you can get in a can. It's called like the chipotle adobo. Smoky chipotle. It's so, it's just mm -hmm. so flavorful. You can add jalapeno if you would like to add more flavor. I'm going to mix all these together. I'm going to move this seasoning out the way. Have my dry ingredients here. This would be easier with the whisk, but I didn't grab one. So <laughs> I'm going to make this work here. All right. Good. Oh, that's okay. Now that I got this here, I'm going to fold in these ingredients. I'm going to mix in the wet ingredients with the dry. When was the first time you had hush puppies? I honestly can't remember the first time I had hush puppies, but I feel like the fondest memory that I have is of my grandpa making them in our kitchen. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Papa, what's that? I thought it was like cornbread. I wasn't mm -hmm. sure. They're like these little fried nuggets there. Mm -hmm. And he's like, oh, boo, those are, he called me boo. He's like, boo, those are hush puppies. And uh, my papa, he was from Arkansas. And he was the one that really introduced just really amazing cooking to our family. Um, not only did he introduce Southern food to us, he introduced the food that he cooked um, in restaurants and hotels, hotels mm -hmm. and country clubs. Yeah. And so the food that we make is Southern food, but there's definitely a, 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 a gourmet twist to it. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm folding all of this together. And it, I was like trying to describe what texture would you say this is? I would say, I was saying wet sand. How did you describe what, it? I describe it as how <laughs> dressing should look when you, before you cook it. Yeah, I think we have like a camera. I'm not, I'm not sure if it's working, but there's like another little camera here that's kind of zooming up on our food here. But that's kind of the texture that you want. Um, you don't want it to be too wet. If it's too wet, then it won't fry well and it'll, it'll be kind of wet in the middle. So I want it to be a little bit dry. It cooks a little better that way. And because I'm using the gluten-free flour blend that I'm using, my hush puppies are going to be a little bit darker than they would if I were using traditional wheat flour. So I'm going to just... Now, sometimes up. instead of hush puppies, my dad would just make regular hot water cornbread. Mm. I know you guys may be familiar with that. It's, it's literally so simple. It's just cornmeal with hot water, boiling hot water poured into it. And it, it causes a chemical reaction and makes the um, makes it the bread, you can fry it. Mm -hmm. It makes it so it's like soft enough to yeah, eat soft, it. Yeah, soft in the middle, but a little bit crunchy on the outside. 
So I'm just testing my oil here. I'm using coconut oil. Mm -hmm. um, I usually, usually use coconut oil or avocado oil when I fry. I hear it's healthier. You may hear something different in 10 years, but um, I just <laughs> continue using the coconut oil. Our um, oil has had a, been a rev, uh, evolution. We started with lard, a lot of lard. I think everybody had a little Crisco in their yeah. house with um, the blue can with the red Crisco on it. Um, that was what most things were fried with when I was a child at home. And then we moved to a healthier version of corn oil. But um, as, as, we, as we learn more about health and uh, what's good for us, we can take that same thing and make it a little bit better for us. And like she said, she's doing coconut oil, coconut oil. or you could do olive oil. And, there's, and there are, there, you can buy like um, lard and rendered fat in the stores as well if you're interested in doing it that way. And there are some health benefits to doing it that way too. So I'm, what I have here is a method that I can't remember what she told me. It's called, <laughs> but something I discovered, I thought I discovered it. What but. she's doing is called, the chef term is, is, is a quenelle. You take a spoon like she's doing. Yep, a little make, teaspoon. Mm -hmm, or whatever size spoon yeah. and you can form them use a spoon to form the shape mm -hmm. uh, you can do it with desserts um frying things anything it's a it's a pretty common chef thing to do yeah she didn't even know she was I, the reason what i was <laughs> the reason why i was doing it was because i wanted to form like really nicely shaped hush puppies that were round and not super spiky in the mouth because some of them that i was putting in i just dropped them in without like really forming a nice shape so i just kind of grab a teaspoon here and then i kind of form a little ball at the end of the teaspoon and then I kind of slowly slide the hush puppy in kind of keeping that nice round shape so this oil is a, is at about 350 and I bought a digital thermometer it's so much easier that way <laughs> um, and it really helps um, with with frying helps with getting an accurate temperature so I would say um, I would say just fry for one side on one side for about 30 seconds and then it should kind of flip over if not then flip over the hush puppy yourself and then I just fry them for like two to three minutes um, and what's really cool is I the way I cut the cheese I cut it into like little tiny squares rather than shredding it and so I can see the cheese just like oozing and bubbling out as I'm frying um, so it's just, it's just really, really delicious. So I'm just browning that here. I'm only going to make a few of them for, for the camera. I'm going to move this guy out the way. Just put this down there. Cool. So I'm just going to cook that here. And then I have a wrap. good. I, you know, kind of uh, the bell pepper, like gives it kind of like almost like a pizza-y smell. <laughs> and my kids love pizza. And mm -hmm. so um, they, they love these. So does my husband. He's like, I, he's like, I don't really like hush puppies. He's like, they're cool, but he's like, I really like how you've added um, the extra flavor elements. And again, add whatever you like. You can add jalapeno, you mm. can add onion, garlic. Mm -hmm. You can make a sauce for them. Mm -hmm. um, I think I, I lowered the temperature a little bit too much here, but that's okay. That is okay. So I have some already prepared. I'm gonna let that just cook for a second here. And here are my already prepared hush puppies. I don't know if y'all can see those. Um, they're little tiny guys um and i'm just gonna finish up these guys on top here a little lighter than the other ones but that's okay just gonna stick these on top you notice how beautifully she's presented oh this? you're so kind <laughs> my father um was a stickler for presentation he didn't want it to just taste good he said you eat with your eyes first yes um apparently so did my grandma mac <laughs> on my mom's side she was very particular about how things looked and you had to come to the table when the food was hot or you weren't allowed to eat <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't want to miss out on that i'm no. sure people were rushing i heard her food was amazing you know I, uh, that's one thing like when i would talk to granny mm -hmm. Your mom, mm -hmm. she would always talk about how good her grandmother's Grandma food was. Yeah. Like she made this amazing fruitcake. I've never heard anybody say fruitcake was amazing. But Listen, apparently was, this woman's... It was a Japanese fruitcake. Yes. And I really hate that that recipe was lost. We don't know where it is. No, but it was apparently very amazing. But I also found out recently okay. that she would actually sell food. People purchase food from her. And I'm like, oh, that's me. That's where it came from. That's it's in the family. It's in, the family. <laughs> it's in our gene pool. Okay, so I'm done with that here. And then also, I got the salad. Oh, your next so, dish? So my, my next dish is my papa's cucumber and 
tomato and onion salad. And my first memory of this salad is uh, from a Cool Whip container. I was actually super disappointed. I think I was like maybe seven and I grabbed a spoon. I was like, I saw my Cool Whip in the refrigerator. So I opened up the fridge and I opened up the container and I was like, oh my gosh, it's vegetables. But um, <laughs> anyways, um, I, I ended up trying it. It was super good. So this is a really, really easy dish. Um, let me grab my, where's my bowl? Gosh, let me grab my bowl here. This dish is what well, I've discovered um, as my, in my travels in the South. You find this dish everywhere. It's, it's um, on the table, whether they're serving fried chicken or chicken and dumplings. It's very um, simple, yeah. yeah. It's, it's like it's a perfect salad. So when yeah. I started recreating this for, for my family, I would make it in the morning. And mm -hmm. then I would put the dressing on. That's what really makes a salad. I put this dressing on and let it sit. Mm -hmm. And then um, when it came time for dinner, I would just bring out the veggies and it was super easy because I, 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 I'm i so bad at like making dinner, but I always forget vegetables. So having the salad already prepared is really, really nice. So what I'm adding are some onions. So I've got some onions added here. This is about maybe about a half an onion. This is a white onion that I have here. And then we got maybe about one and a half cucumbers. I love the way these are cut up. I love how it's like that you see the dark green and the light green contrast. Mm -hmm. Again, eating with your eyes and mm -hmm. adding all that color. Um, when I was a kid, I remember my dad coming home, pulling up in the driveway. And before he would even come in the house, he would head straight to his garden. And so whatever was fresh is what was in the salad. Sometimes it would be lemon cucumbers, sometimes it would be radishes or, but always tomatoes and always onions. Cause he always, those are the things he grew a lot of um, yes. very much. So this is, I like this because of all the color. He would have loved looking at this. He'd have been like, look I, at you boo. I know, oh my gosh, I'm kind of proud of this. So um, I'm, so I'm adding all these. So what I have here, just again, white, White onion, you can add any type of onion you want. I have cucumber, I have red tomato, and then I found like some heirloom tomatoes at my regular grocery store and they come in a variety of colors. And the mm -hmm. reason why I wanted to add it is because you said Papa would add um, green tomatoes mm -hmm. to his um, his mm -hmm. salad. So I was I don't know where I can find that. So I found this and the color is just, it's really pretty. So um, I have the dressing. So what's in this dressing um, traditionally is uh, apple cider vinegar, um, sugar, and what else did we add to it? A little salt, a little black salt pepper. and pepper. I simplified it by adding um, coconut aminos, which is almost like a like a coconut soy sauce. It's very very unctuous and sweet, and just it's just filled it's molassesy and salty. It's like all the good all the good flavors in one. Um, and then it, I also added some apple cider vinegar, and then you add pepper as well. So I'm just gonna drizzle this on top here. Right. I'm good here. That's pretty. Thank you. I, let me see if I can zoom up on Can y'all see this? Okay. Oh, sorry. This, it, this. Okay. I wish I could have good. you guys here in person and see like these colors. It just, it's really popping. So um, I'm going to mix this up a little bit more. I don't want to mix it up too much because I don't want the tomatoes to disintegrate. Um, so let me do that. Papa had the most amazing tomato plants. They would grow <laughs> so tall and so sweet. So it was always such a treat to be able to have a have a uh, some tomatoes from his garden. So I'm just uh, letting this sit in the fridge and letting that marinate, and then um, we'll bring it out and garnish it uh, when it's ready. But okay. we're, we're gonna move on to your dish. All right, our next dish. Um, I didn't realize that this dish had an actual name. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's called Cowboy Caviar. And I actually thought you made up this I, name. I wish I had. I was bragging about this salad. I was like, my mom made up this salad called Cowboy Caviar. And I found out a couple days ago. You know, mom didn't, make that, <laughs> didn't make that up. My dad made it all the time. And all it is is black eyed peas. Now, you can use black eyed peas in the can that are already cooked, like a 15 ounce can. But I like to make my own. I try to do everything from scratch as much as possible. So you have the black eyed peas, and I don't season them like my normal black eyed peas. It's just salt, pepper, a little bay leaf, just to give it a little flavor, because um, it's a salad. And there's roasted corn. Um, I cut it right from the cob. You can use frozen if you must, but um, 
but fresh from the cob is, okay, is absolutely perfect. the best. But you yeah. can use frozen. I wouldn't use canned too much water, but I would definitely um, do the frozen. Okay. It also contains um, red bell pepper, green bell pepper, and jalapeno. Mm. More color, red onion. <laughs> I feel like a lot of these dishes have a lot of onion as well. That's they like do. a very common thing that pulls them together. Onion is such a um, excellent thing to season with. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. onions and garlic, such a simple, yes. you know, we use onion powder to garlic powder, but the actual onion and garlic gives it so much more flavor, yes. which right now I'm going to add um, some garlic. Mm -hmm. Now mine contains also cilantro. Trust me, there was no cilantro in my house when I was a child. I can't imagine growing up without cilantro. <laughs> I know. Like, I feel like it's but, like an everyday staple. No, when I was a kid, there was no such thing as cilantro. I mean, oh there was, obviously, but we didn't cook with it. Mm -hmm. But I added it because I loved it, and then it added another element of flavor to the dish. Um, you also need some uh, acid. In this case, I use lime, fresh lime. You can use vinegar. My dad used to use vinegar in his, um, but I like the taste of lime. Ever since the Caribbean, I can't get away from lime. It's yeah, so I, good. It's like the lime and the cilantro together. Just like they the do. Flavors. They take it Married to a flavor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And a little sugar in almost everything we cook. That was uh, something that I learned from you that I uh -huh. think it was also your great granny. Yeah. My gr great granny told. My granny, so granny like told sugar me sugar and salt little sugar everything, and everything. Just to bring out the flavor. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna use a little sugar, and then I make my own version of seasoning salt because the one you buy in the store is super salty. I also use pepper flakes instead of cayenne pepper, and I also add parsley to mine. So just a little bit. Um, this recipe is also one that's on the card, so. Um, that's why I didn't give you all the specific measurements. So if you want, the recipe is actually there. And this salad also tastes better when it's marinated. You need to let it sit in the refrigerator for at least an hour so all the flavors can absorb. Um, the black eyed pea is such a humble but amazing vegetable. It's very universal. I mean, I'm sorry, bean. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's one of the um, foods that we actually brought from Africa mm -hmm. with um our ancestors brought with us so it's amazing how we still use them to this day it's and, just incredible. in so many ways yeah. and and even i guess it african dishes with yeah. it yeah um but we use them in the americas and so yeah so here's the i let me let me borrow that let okay so everybody just little, our little camera here try not to get that hot oil again i wish i could bring you guys into our kitchen so you could see the full color spectrum here and it's just beautiful and what I love about this dish is that it's vegan too like you could I'm always worried like about including everybody I'm, I'm gluten-free and I'm like mm -hmm. I want to make sure that I bring a dish to a potluck that everybody can eat and that's what I love the most about this can I put this in the yep. refrigerator refrigerator, it goes in the refrigerator. Okay. okay the next dish I'm going to cook is uh, one that was very popular in my home growing up smothered cabbage let me grab my ingredients I'm gonna grab some. Of these. Oh yeah, let me help you. Grab this guy. I'm gonna grab more. Yeah. Whoa. A whole bunch of stuff over here. Put this over here. Move this rack out the way. And let me grab this hot oil too. There it is. Our... Okay, the smothered cabbage. There are so many variations of this. I was trying to decide if I was gonna do a vegetarian version or if I was going to do the meat version. I decided to do a meat version. And if you want to do it vegetarian, you just leave the bacon off and um, the chicken bouillon. In fact, instead of the chicken bouillon, you can use a veggie bouillon to give it more flavor. So grab a pot here. I feel like you've had that pot for a long time. Actually, this is, <laughs> is this that a new kind one? one? Kind of newer after okay. the last 15 years. That feels like a long time to me. <laughs> I guess pot. compared to the cast iron skills that we yeah. have, it's yeah. pretty, it's pretty new. We have some pretty old cast so we got iron. A little olive family. oil in there. Again, um, a little departure from the other, but this is not necessarily extra healthy because we're going to put bacon in there. Yummy. And my favorite bacon. is um, peppered bacon. Um, you can also use 
my mom used to put kielbasa in hers, in her um, smothered cabbage. But you want to fry the bacon. Get it going. Gosh, Is I this love... up as high as it can go? I think it should go a little higher. I had to turn okay. it down because I was burning my oil. Right. Okay. So you want to um, get the bacon to where it's kind of crisp, not crispy, but the fat starting to render. Mm -hmm. And once that happens, once that happens, then you can start adding the vegetables to wilt them. Then we'll add the cabbage. But first of all, we're going to get this bacon um, to start to wilt. Do you mind if I turn it up a little bit? Go ahead, it's turn it up. It's driving me crazy. Okay. And we're just learning this thing. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I think While that's up. heating up, I'm okay. going to, um, the other dish I was going to make is a um, oven fried chicken. Um, actually, the chicken eater in my house was my mom. The chicken cooker in my house yeah. was my mom. Although my dad would fried millions of pieces of chicken at the burger barn at home, my mom was the person who cooked the chicken. She loved She's a chicken expert. Fried chicken. I remember the funny thing about granny is she always loved Popeyes. Yeah, she did. And she would always have somebody bring Popeyes over to her house. <laughs> And she wouldn't cook it in a microwave. She wouldn't heat it up in a microwave. She'd nope. heat it up in her little toaster oven. It yep. took about like 45 minutes, but she was like, it's so much better because it's crispy. It tastes crispy. It's crispy. Mm -hmm. And that's the one thing I remember about Granny. She wouldn't yeah. microwave her chicken. She'd put yeah, it in Yeah, she didn't like that microwave. Toaster oven, much. no. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How's it doing over there? Do I, think, I think it's doing let good. Let it sit. Just let it sit okay. for a sec. <laughs> let it sit for a sec. Okay. So we can start to get it brown. So I'm learning can... here, guys, too. <laughs> It's like I make I feel like I make things my way, but I think it's so important to learn how you do things too. So I can tell my kids, like this is how Mimi mm -hmm. makes her. Food. I think what's interesting is nobody ever said to me, come into the kitchen. I'm gonna show you how to cook XYZ. Right. It was just I was always in the kitchen. I was either with my dad and my granny, and my mm -hmm. mom. I didn't get to cook much with my great grandmother. Um she was I was, you know, pretty young and she had was not doing a lot of cooking at that point, but um, my granny, that's a, a whole nother episode with her recipes. Um, I think, you know, one thing is amazing though, your grandmother's rolls, your great grandmother's rolls are passed down and Wanda would make them all the time, oh. right? And Wanda's goal was to make rolls like hers, yeah. right? And they were the best rolls you could ever imagine in the world. And Wanda was like, I still don't have them right. I'm like, Wanda, how don't you have them right? They're perfect. She would be you know, amazing. Wanda, my aunt Wanda, which is my grandmother's younger sister, would make the most amazing food, the most oh. comforting food. And she was the most humble. I'm going to call her chef. She's a chef. And she would, she'd she be the first person to tell you she wasn't a chef. But her food was the like some of the best I've ever I'm, had. I'm extremely picky. I'm extremely picky with food. Get out your way. But you with food. her, it was never a question. Okay, so the vegetables that go into the cabbage are that we use are uh, green bell pepper, red bell pepper, onions, and garlic. Um, you can use garlic salt. I mean, not garlic salt, garlic powder, mm -hmm. but it's just not the same. So it's nice to have the fresh. Mm -hmm. The fresher your ingredients are, the better. If you can't afford organic, that's okay. Still buy vegetables. That's the goal. The goal is to get the vegetables in. Um, speaking of the vegetables, they were a huge part of our ancestry. We we weren't given a lot of food, and so we had right, to I'm supplement our uh, food with our gardens. And we li a lot of people lived out of their gardens. Um, I remember very specifically my father feeding many people besides ourselves out of his garden. Um, everywhere he lived, or me or my brother lived, he would plant a garden. We were so lucky um, in having that. I remember like as a little girl, just like, pick, I told me, I'm sorry. I have my little baby with me today. Little mama's but not feeling good today. I remember a little today. girl just going through his garden and eating dirty, dirty produce and dirty, radishes oh baby so okay i'm adding to this a little bit of my own seasoning salt and once again the sugar so we're going to use brown yeah. sugar yeah, brown yeah. sugar to me um it has more flavor than the um than, than white sugar mm -hmm. it gives it a little more mm -hmm. yeah and i use chicken um bouillon 
This chicken bouillon, specifically, a yeah, a little smell would be good. Okay. It's called better than bouillon, and it's not hard like the cubes that you would normally buy in the store. Um, and so it it melts really quickly into the food and has a lot of flavor. Again, if you're not, um, you want to do it vegetarian, they make this better than bouillon in a vegetarian form as well. It's like a chicken flavor, but it's vegetarian. Right. And a beef flavor, but it's vegetarian. Yeah. Super cool. Uh -oh. um, all right. So as those start mm -hmm. to cook down a little bit. Oh, wanna... It so good, by the I way. Know, it I know. smells amazing. I wish we had a little smell of vision so you guys could smell this. Um, so I was gonna, while that's cooking, I'm gonna grab my chicken. I'm gonna, I'm gonna it's already, it's already, it's already been seasoned. And I realized when I was left my mom's house, I didn't have near the seasonings I had at home. Cause you know, when you leave home, you don't have that much money. And my seasoning became extremely simple for my chicken. And it took me a while to realize, I was like, why doesn't it taste like mom? So now I've gone back to making it like she makes. And I know I'm not the only person whose folks use a right. brown paper bag yeah. uh, to coat the chicken with flour. Right. I would think I remember a, a, a plastic Safeway bag growing yeah. up. We use those too. <laughs> we use but those we, too. You use what you can. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And the flour is seasoned just as well as the chicken. The exact same seasoning yeah. that's in the chicken is in the flour. And what that does is gives you layers of flavor. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna throw these little guys in here. That smells so good. Mm, that smells good. You've seen this before. Give it a good there shake. Go. Now, these are going to be oven fried. Um, I do fry rarely, but when I want chicken, I usually oven fry it just to keep it a little bit healthier. You add a pinch of baking soda and that makes it crispy because that's part of the flavor that the what you like about chicken is that, oh, crunch. that crunch yeah yes. you like that crunch and that's why i'm like i don't do i really want to fry my chicken but when you add the baking the soda, baking soda but don't add, add too crispy. much because then it'll have a, a a weird aftertaste i've done that and you don't want to do that so um all right we got them all you shake off the dust I have a budding chef over here. This is how it starts. <laughs> this age, it's exactly how it starts. In your mama's arms. Okay. Cast iron. I swear by it. Live by it. Cook by it. Big cast iron fan. Um, it heats things evenly. And also the iron, when you cook with it, and stir it up, it leaches into the food, mm -hmm. which gives you iron, which makes you... Yeah, especially like when you add like lemon, the acidity helps to bring mm -hmm. that out there. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in the oven. Get the get the um, oil hot. Once that oil heats up, I'll place the chicken into the hot oil. Never put chicken in cool oil. It won't be crispy and it'll be soggy. Nobody wants soggy crisp, uh, soggy chicken. That's looking pretty good, Muffin. It looks good. I'm doing okay. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I called her Muffin. That's what I've been that calling her all her name. life. It's not okay. embarrassing for me. Let we'll me get switch. out the way. Let's we'll switch you and little mama. Okay. Oh, let me get the water. And we need a lid. Oh, lovely dress, lady. Oh, okay. I like your dress. Now, since Thank it's smothered you. cabbage, this is almost a whole head of cabbage. The vegetables are sufficiently wilted. You add the cabbage. Oh, nice. Seems like so much cabbage. Well, I know. Right? And it shrinks down to nothing. <laughs> I love that. It's like greens. You got to work so that. hard to get a few greens. Right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, as I said before, there are layers of seasoning. So every time I add something to it, you need to add more seasoning. Mm -hmm. So we're going to add a little bit more of my own personal season and that goes a long way i've seen you use it in a few of your dishes yes so it goes a long way everything and in this one saying we already put a little more of the brown sugar the rolling stones will be happy <laughs> okay 
put right. that in there. Use it and next, just put a lid on it. <coughs> smother it. <laughs> Literally, that's what you're doing. When you're smothering it, you're making it soft. There's several schools to this. I personally like mine a little more al dente, but my dad used to make it, and my mom used to make it where the cabbage was really soft it and all the vegetables mouth. were really soft. Yeah, I love that because it would I melt know. in your mouth. <laughs> Granny made broccoli that was like melt. Okay, your mouth wait, up. I forgot to add the water. How do you forget water to smother that's cabbage? A, that's okay. I mean, I feel like it makes its own water too because after it, it does, for a but while. you need to add some, especially since I added the chicken broth, okay. so it makes a um, kind of a okay, like a sauce almost okay. underneath it. And as it starts to wilt, then I will mix the vegetables. But right now, it needs to shrink down. So we'll let that do its thing. Okay. Let's get this stuff out of here, out of the way. And Tina, you got it. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, some of you may know my father. His name is, was Chris Gwynn. Mm -hmm. One of his jobs, besides being a chef, was uh, at Sportsman's Barbershop. Sportsman's Barbershop was on Williams Avenue, owned by Willie. And he also owned the record store, which was um, right down the street. And then right down the street from that was the Multnomah County Albina Branch Library. Mm -hmm. We spent many, many, many hours in that library. Um, if my dad was working late or he was going to be like, we'd get a record, stop with the record, and then we would go to the library. Also, my Aunt Wanda. Yeah, she, took us, uh, she had, so it was right across the street from our house. Mm -hmm. And we'd go there often to. Mm -hmm get books and she I think she got me my first library card she got me my first <laughs> library card too auntie got yeah. me my first library like, card as well to get your library card and I was yeah. like okay and I remember getting a library book we I went, felt like we got to visit different places we hadn't been able to go yet yeah at the library she would um introduce foods to us we never heard of through books that we'd gotten at the library yeah. um I remember when we and then we would look at them and then we would go and try to find them. Unfortunately, in the neighborhood we lived in, we couldn't find a lot of things, but there was a store, it was called Grenfell's, and it was on MLK. And Wanda would tell them she was looking for something and lo and behold, sometimes it would just show up like whole coconuts. Wait, what kind of, I've never heard of this before. What kind of store is this? It was just a regular a little- grocery store? No, well, it was a grocery store. Oh. It was just a little neighborhood okay. grocery store. Okay. Um, it's just cool. like a little neighborhood store, okay. like. Ed's Market or like the market across the street from my house. Like, okay. um, they definitely would help her out and they would let her bring different things. Let me check on the cabbage here. Looking good. What do I do with my tongs? Oh, you can use those ones right there. They really don't work that well. Oh. I like the other ones better. Oh, here you go. Here's a tongue for you. Oh, Here's there it is. Yeah. Okay. All right. This is still, you can see it's just starting to wilt. Oh, that looks so nice. You flip everything from the bottom to the top. You see and all the colors now. And there you can yeah. see there's all the bell peppers, yeah. the flavor, the onions, and everything. It's really pretty. Yeah, we still go to the library. Um, most recently, I, I feel like once school started, it's been kind of hard for us to go to the library as a family, but mm -hmm. we did uh, the lunch program that was there, the free lunch program, and we mm -hmm. get lunch and then we check out books and. Mm -hmm so fun for our family but lately i just do a lot of like checking out and online and then i pick up my books what's, well, the, what's going on the here? pandemic too right you know obviously things slowed down and my two-year-old does pretty wild out in public so i rather oh. i rather not take her anywhere <laughs> she's a pandemic baby she doesn't know how to act out and about okay. what's going on baby okay yeah all she's right. not feeling good at all okay so through the magic of television as we say Oh, let me grab this hot oil out of here. It's nice and hot for the chicken. Mm. Uh, looks good. Normally, I would refrigerate the chicken for about an hour after I um, set it in flour when I oven fry it because it keeps the flour on better. Because okay. when you deep fry it, mm -hmm. instantly. Yeah. But because when you're just have very tiny bit of oil. Right. You need to make sure that the um, flour stays on. on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. 
So just place them in there. Nice. And so you put them down. Down side. Okay. Now, I remember my mom used to do her wings like this. Tuck. She would tuck them. Yeah. She tucked them and fried them. But I don't know why or when I started unfolding them. I find that it stays, like the batter stays on a lot better. It does. It yeah. But mama wasn't a big batterer. She didn't okay. do a lot of batter. Yeah. But it also fries much faster when you do it like this. It cooks much faster. So just put this in the oven. About 375. Um, I have a convect oven. I don't. <laughs> at home. So it, <laughs> it takes about 20 minutes. But I think in the average oven is probably about 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to throw this in there. Okay. Okay. Get this in there. Um, That's hot. Okay. So that takes about 45 minutes to do. I'm not doing my job. I'm supposed to be cleaning. <laughs> I've never been one to clean. Well, <laughs> she was, she, normally she helps me out when we do, but, but, but she's not having that today, but that's okay. You know what? That's all right. Yeah. That's all right. So the cabbage is almost done. As I said, you can cook it with either um, bacon or a kielbasa or no meat at all. There are many times lately I've been trying to do a more plant-based diet, which I know a lot of us are doing now. Maybe not going vegetarian or anything, but actually just trying to eat less meat and stuff. So that's where that comes in handy. All right. Okay, so we'll let that continue to do its thing. I'm going to grab a plate. All right. We put everything together. Oh, okay. everything's together. Nice. All we have left is your hibiscus tea. Hibiscus tea. All right. I don't know if she's going to be able to do that I'm tea with try. Ferris. Okay. I'm going to try. Okay. Where, okay, so in here. I'll grab them. We're going to grab our cups. Okay. Yeah. So um, I don't. So. Last year, I wanted to celebrate Juneteenth with my family, and Juneteenth, you told me was something that you were very familiar with growing yeah, up. Because my granny. Your family's from Texas, Texas yeah. and Juneteenth um, has its origins in Texas. That's yes. finally when, they, Galveston. Mm -hmm. um, when, when Black folks in Texas were finally told that they were free, mm -hmm. even though they were free long before then, a couple years before then. Free. So it's celebrated with a uh, red pop or red soda or red drinks. Mm -hmm. And so I was researching and I found that hibiscus tea is actually a drink that's used to celebrate during Juneteenth. So um, my kids and I kind of crafted a drink together and I'm going to show you how it's made. You first need a pitcher and I fill it with ice. And then what I have here is some hibiscus tea. And I've had this steeping for about, I don't know, 30 minutes or so. Mm -hmm. And hot water and I'm using loose leaf hibiscus tea when I first made this recipe um I just used tea bags I used maybe around five or six tea bags I'm gonna pass this off to my pass her off to my um husband so that she doesn't get hurt in this process one second I know sweet girl mama will be back mama will be back <laughs> oh sweet girl so I've used about I want to say six cups of hot water um, and about one and a half cups of uh, loose leaf hibiscus tea. And you can buy this in your bulk food natural section um, at your store. Any, actually, just any bulk section at your grocery store. Um, so, and you have some ice here. So I'm going to pour this um, hibiscus tea in here. Um, I, will also, sugar is in I will also see, yeah, there's some oh. sugar in here. Mm -hmm. um, so I just have some regular cane sugar. Mm. Um, just the, Unprocessed kinds of just put that in there, and you can see the flowers, they're kind of all bloomed in here. This is like Jamaican hibiscus tea. And I learned that like hibiscus tea, there's several different types or hibiscus uh, flowers, there's several, several different types, and some are in Asia and some are in Africa. Um, there's just it's just really a really cool plant, it has medicinal properties. I just found out it increases your estrogen and it can also lower your blood pressure. So. Yeah, I had to stop drinking it because I have naturally low blood pressure. <laughs> and it, yeah. I got a little lightheaded. But, right. But it, it basically is good for you. It's and, good for you. Just yeah. don't overdo it. But my yeah. granny did tell me about Red Pop Day um, when I was a, probably a teenager. Mm -hmm. I, I had never heard of it. I mean, it's not something they tell you about in school. No. And 
um, and I had a friend, her name was Felicia Harris. And we would, um, on Red Pop Day, we would go get a Red Pop. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. I love Red it's, Pop. It, it was my favorite pop as a kid. Um, every day after school, me and my friend, my other friend, Felicia, that's another uh, Felicia. You have a lot of friends named Felicia. Felicia. How many friends named Felicia do you have? Just two. How do I, okay, Wait, so I don't know. Like well, you, several. Like okay. several. Okay. But best friend's only one. Okay. okay. <laughs> but we would stop by the Alberta Fish Market, which is on Alberta Street, obviously. Every day after school, I would order a red pop and a dill pickle. Ooh. I was so funny how when we're teenagers, how we have that thing that we always eat for me is like yeah. spicy, spicy Cheetos yeah. and a Jones soda, like every day. I couldn't even awful. imagine. Okay. Awful for you. But All right. You do. Um. So what I've added is some oranges. I've added about a whole orange to um this tea here. Okay. And then um, while she's storing that, I'm going to grab this chicken grab out the of chicken. the oven. I'm going to add some mint as well to kind of finish this off. And I just kind of tear the leaves to break down those oils, add a nice flavor. This obviously didn't just happen. <laughs> we could be <laughs> sure. <laughs> Pretty sure. So I'm going to plate. One of my favorite things to do is to plate. I know a lot of you follow me and you see the food on the plate. I actually plate that food. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to take some. We have the smothered cabbage. cabbage. Right. Oh, you got everything out. Let me close. Oh, sorry. You, 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 you grab that. Fine. You got your hands full. Tomato salad and uh, cowboy caviar. Okay. So nice. I got I to give you these green onions so you can garnish. I know. Okay. Thank you. Add a nice little touch there. And my. I'm going to start pouring this tea. And so you can, I was going to say with this tea, you can kind of add the, like, as much sugar as you want. I know being down south, I had the sweetest tea I'd ever had in my life. It was really good. I was like, whoa, this is really sweet. And here in the Pacific Northwest, I know we really don't sweeten our teas that much. So I like to do a blend. I like to make it, make it kind of sweet, but not too sweet. I use a slotted spoon when I do the um, cabbage because I don't like a lot a wet plate, but some people, that's the part they like about it, so it could get into their cornbread and soak that. up their other food. Oh, my cornbread, like greens and cornbread, oh my gosh. This but it good. makes my chicken wet, and I'm not a fan of that. Right. So yeah. anyway, um, we'll have the, uh, the cabbage. I forgot. Here we go. I'm going to add this, too. So this is supposed to go with the salad. This is a balsamic um glaze i like reduce some um balsamic vinegar with some blackberries that was um, papa's favorite blackberries blackberries my grandpa's favorite and then that is to go with the um, cucumber and tomato salad it just adds a nice sweet element to it mm -hmm. oh that plate looks so beautiful my goodness mm -hmm. i love how you have peppers there i love how you have the peppuccinis can you eat Chicken without peppers or hot sauce? I, mean, I do have hot sauce now. Okay. <laughs> I didn't for a while. She was like, how do you not have hot sauce? I know. My brother was like, my, my brother came over one day. He's like, hey, but where's your hot sauce? He's like, do you have sriracha? He's like, what? Something? Like, I don't have anything right now. And then we're going to add a couple of those beautiful, can you give me some of those beautiful hush puppies? Yes, ma'am. Okay. You can turn the cabbage off. It's turned off for you. Sufficiently sunken. Okay. Sunken. I think, ooh, I'm gonna unplug it. I think that's, that's a good idea here for me. Okay. Let's add some, of, some of those beautiful hush puppies. Yeah, on I don't know where Tom's. I'm gonna just grab these my fingers. I would not okay. do this in real life, but it's okay. Don't do my fingers. Yes, sweet girl. Okay. My daughter's calling the name. There okay. we go. <laughs> there we are. This is our that southern way. traditional meal. I can. There you go. I'll give y'all a close that's, up um, here. Oven fried chicken. That's so colorful. Smothered cabbage. Cowboy caviar and garden fresh cucumber tomato salad. And we're going to have some hibiscus tea. Yes. Take a quick sip. Let's we'll see how this okay. is. Okay. Let me set this down here. I'm going to grab it. Okay. All right. Let me give you some hibiscus. Yep. Okay. Yep. Let's see. Mm. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's really refreshing. That's really good. That's on point. Okay. I like that. Okay. Yeah. So, um, I wanted to know if anybody had any questions they would like to ask us about the meals we cook or about mm -hmm. anything they've seen today mm -hmm. or just, you know, just general questions. I do want to, there's one thing that I wanted to add though. What? Oh, so I'm sorry. I forgot. I totally forgot about it. I'm <laughs> so sorry. I'm doing this together. 
So part of like the inspiration behind, you know, a lot of what we're doing, um, combining and recognizing the col our culinary traditions is um, a book called High on the Hog by Jessica Harris. She's a chef author, an author for mm -hmm. Essence and editor. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to share, I read the book um, and there's also a docu-series on Netflix that's excellent. I saw that first and I just, I just read this book. And this if you haven't watched it, please do. Please do. It's amazing. So let me just read this for you guys. This is, finally, we seem to be nearing the goal. Sure, there's room for improvement. Certainly, there should be a greater television presence with African Americans that showcase our gastronomic diversity. Restaurant ownership remains a problem, especially during these harsh economic times. Certainly, the scope of the Black culinary repertoire should not be limited, but rather should be acknowledged. Catering should be valued and recognized as, as a historic path to success, especially for women. And let's finally get beyond the soul food label. We've journeyed far and the rest is attainable in the bountiful world of American food. It is a simple request to be acknowledged for the integral part that we have played in the formation of American culinary ethos. To sit down at the table of success with the members of the food community and to begin to truly eat and live high on the hog. I, for one, am looking forward to it. My mouth is watering and I can hardly wait. That right there just gave me goosebumps. Love that, love that. It's an awesome book. It's awesome. Yeah. And it just, mm -hmm. it just really summarizes that like our food, our culinary tradition is so important to this country and, rich. and so right. rich and mm -hmm. It continues mm -hmm. to grow and you make it what it is. We mm -hmm. make it what it is. You we know? can evolve it. We can take it where we want to. You, it is It is our uh, food. Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Question? Oh, Question? I, need to, <laughs> I need to switch it. I can't, I can't see it. I have my says, TV. what would you have for dessert after this? Oh my goodness. Oh yeah, tell, tell it them. It depends. Now okay. if you're at my house, when my mama, she was gonna make a peach cobbler. Mm, granny made the best peach cobbler. She made amazing peach cobbler. Um, actually, the insides were really, 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 really good. And then I would make the crust. Yeah. Um, I like, can't make like crust. It skips a generation. It literally yeah. skips a generation in our family. <laughs> crust I can't making. make crust. Her mom could make crust, but she can. You can make crust. And, and my granny can, can make crust. crust. So my daughter will be able to make, make crust. crust. <laughs> they will be able to make crust, right? You guys. I yeah I would I don't know I would eat whatever she's eating and I also love sweet potato pie oh sweet my gosh oh, I can never but, have enough of that okay That's my favorite my, my favorite. family eats sweet potato pie different than I'll most eat people. it anyway ours is not <laughs> ours is not spicy it doesn't have clove or ginger or anything like that it's just nutmeg is the only spice thank you Teresa mm -hmm. sweet sweet yep. comment thank mm -hmm. you all right oh be here. Any other, you might scroll up a little bit for us, Tone. I also want to thank my husband. My husband has volunteered his time and his technical ability to put some of this stuff together for us. Lighting. Yeah. He's our engineer. If I could show you guys what this looks oh, like. It, it's, it's like a real set <laughs> on a like TV video. show. We've got lights and cameras. It, and it looks so real. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, guys. Thank, thank you very much. That. We've got a question um, from Nicole. This American female says, owned. I don't know. Well, oh, um, what's um? There's cheese a loaded kitchen. cheese loaded kitchen. She's one person she's I good. know. Um, and then I know some some folks from the diaspora, like uh, just African diaspora. Like uh, what's her name? Uh, from the Jamaican restaurant that you oh, love. she's the amazing. Jamaican restaurant I love. It's a Jamaican home style. Mm -hmm. It's um, and that's right across from the show. Get it on channel. Hopefully soon. <laughs> That would yes, be lovely. Yes. And I and also there is a, a, a black woman owned coffee shop. A new one that just it's called up. Holy Beans. Yes. I was there on Saturday. You were you I was. Work? I met oh, her. Gosh, She's so me. sweet. Oh. Shalomar is her name. Oh, I see. She's her. an amazing young woman. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. She's got a lot going on. There's just there's so much going on. Mm -hmm. I feel like most of the people that I follow happen to be on Instagram. <laughs> yeah. And I, I feel bad that I'm not shouting everybody out, but there mm -hmm. are there's definitely black women doing their yep. thing. Yep. 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 Um I do I have I have other friends that cater. Um Yvette Penson, she's a caterer. Um hers is, and she also does dessert. Um I can't think of anybody else off the top of my head right now, but <laughs> 
she tests everything on me because I don't cook. <laughs> she is one of my favorite people to cook for, Vicky, Gwen. Um, usually for her birthday, I make her this amazing meal of things that she would never normally eat. But she's also my cousin, only cousin I have that will eat okra. I keep trying to eat okra. We're working on it. We're working on it. Because <laughs> it seems so important to our culture, but... Thank you for eating my okra, Vicky. I, I yeah, and I miss. I used to be we used to be neighbors. Yeah, and anything that she would make, she would bring it down. Bring it down. Now she just sends me pictures. I'm like, that's not. That's not okay. That's not okay. I don't like that. I want. I want food. Selena. I oh yeah. Yes, Selena said. What I is the most okra. beginner friendly? I would say the cowboy caviar because it doesn't have to be cooked. You can use all raw ingredients. Um, or the and, tomato salad. And the, and the tomato salad. All you need to do is chop. And you could use um, just vinegar and salt and black pepper uh, to make the dish. I just want to let you know that we are uh, at time. And, okay. Um, and we also wanted to make sure that uh, everyone knew that um, we have 10 copies of um, High on the Hog available at, is it Third Eye Books? Um, for um, 10 of the participants here tonight and uh, the library will be sending you an email um, with uh, the 10 lucky folks who will be able to receive a copy um, from Third Eye Books. And uh, we'll also be including the recipe card from tonight's demonstration. Thank you. Thank you guys for pleasure. giving us an opportunity to share our awesome. family recipes. And yeah. thank you guys for joining us today. And we really appreciate you guys. This has been a really, really great opportunity. Thank Sorry you. we don't measure. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Sable. Thank you, Sable. Thanks, Michelle. Great job, guys. Very good job. Excellent. Good job, Sable. Thank you. Thank you, Sable. I've been here for a while. Amazing. I was on mute. I was on mute. <laughs> oh, okay. Excellent job. Excellent. And everyone I got here late. will get a copy of those no recipes. <laughs> I love it. I'm on my way over. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right. Thanks, y'all. All right. Bye. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, baby. Good night, Sarah. Good night, baby. Bye, Sarah. Bye.